will have a new life. I'll make sure of that. How do you make money for nothing? So you can have a little party, are we? The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. It's definitely going to be a challenge for me. That's why reclamation expert Jay Blades wants to get his hands on things before they hit the skip. I've been a builder, I've been a philosophy student, and now I'm a furniture restorer. So I know more than most about transformation. I revamp the old and turn it into the new and sell it on for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... They're nice, aren't they? Don't look at them like that. This is a challenge. <laughs> he can transform his finds into desirable... Da -da. ..valuable... This is amazing. ..and hopefully saleable items. I can't get over it. It looks really good. If Jay is successful, then he can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. Well, I've got another one in the garage if you want to take that. <laughs> It's a full-on, cast-off chucking, junk-tossing frenzy at the Midland Road Recycling Centre in Bradford. And at the centre of all this skip-slinging activity, one man is right at home. They are a friendly bunch up here. They're very nice. Upcycling wonder, Jay Blades. How are we doing? You all right? Finding gems in the junk takes a lot of patience, but good things come to those that wait, and I'm here all day. Jay has special permission to rummage the rubbish, looking for three items he can take away, transform, and trade on for a profit. Couple, I'm your strong lad, ain't ya? Hey. <laughs> Toby and his mum, Carolyn, have arrived, with the car packed to the gunnels. Oh, that's nice. How are we doing? Yeah, I'm all right. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good. I'm Jay, and you are? I'm Toby. Toby? Carolyn. All right, Carolyn. So, what are you doing with all this carpet? I'm just doing a house clean out, so we're just uh, ripping up old bits of carpet and throwing it away. These, these are bits brand new from uh, cut-offs cut from... OK. So you've laid down new carpet, yeah, yeah. and this is the off-cuts thing, yeah, yeah. yeah? All right, cool. There's quite a lot of it you've got, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, fair It's just a funny-shaped room, that was all. Is it all right with you if I have this, then? You can have all it. All of this carpet? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's all, all right. right. So, yeah, you know. Oh, if I'm able to do something with it, I'll keep you guys posted. Cool, blimey, you have got a lot, haven't you? Yeah. All right. Do you want Toby to take yeah. it with No, that's all right, I've got that, Toby. Cheers for that. All right, all right. you guys take care. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Jay's taken Toby and Carolyn's carpet off-cuts. Any idea what he might do with them? Just regular bits of carpet, really. I have no idea what he's going to do with them, to be honest. I don't think it's going to be a miracle. I but, uh... assume he's going to shred them up into something and <laughs> yeah. remake them. No idea. Else. Now, I know what you're thinking. What are you going to do with carpet? But in the right hands, this could turn me a nice little profit. But I think we've got to get creative on this one. And Jay has just the maker in mind. Sarah Peterson a designer maker whose passion is working with what others throw away. Combining creative flair with hands-on hard work, she's usually able to transform even the most forlorn finds into treasured possessions. My personality is reflected in my work. I think when I create something, I'm looking for something to be quite bold, very, very different to what's kind of out there already. Happy as well, bright and colourful, just, just fun, you know? That's, that's, that's me all over. <laughs> Let's hope Sarah can find fun ways to make use of Jay's carpet offcuts. That's one item found and two to go. Oh, bin bags, bin bags, and more bin bags. God blimey, loads of bin bags. Bin bags might not set your pulse racing, Jay. But Irfan's arrived, so let's hope he has something worth searching for in the back of his car. Hello, sir. How are we doing? Not too bad. No? I'm Jay. I'm you are? Irfan. Irfan? Yeah. So, these, 
you wanting to throw those away? Yes, indeed, my friend. Cool. All right. Why are you throwing them away? They look like nothing's wrong with them. No, because I need the space. They were in the garage. I need to empty the garage. OK. Yeah. So how long have you had them then? A uh, couple of years now. I love chairs. Why I love chairs? Because they're just so versatile. So if it's all right with you, I'd like to take these. Of course you can. Yeah? Of course you can. And um, if I'm able to turn them into something, yeah, of course. I'll keep you posted, but cool, no me. problem. These are proper nice. Really, really nice. No All problem. right, I'm going to take this one, no and I'll problem. be back for the other one. Oh, fan? No problem. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. Thank Enjoy you. the sunshine. I will do. Thank you. Jay has bagged a pair of dining chairs. What do you think he'll do with them, oh, fan? Sorry? Your chairs. I don't know why Jay wants my chairs for, because they're just the chairs. I don't know what he's going to do with them. Now, these two are absolutely perfect. All they need is just the seats to be done, the back, maybe put some fabric on there, but definitely the frames need a good clean-up and a spruce-up. And then, hopefully, we'll be able to sell them. Who does Jay want to take these on? Simeon Horton-Smith is an upholsterer with a love of all things vintage. Be it a shabby chaise longue or a creaky old car seat. I like coming to work because basically I have my own creative space. One of the reasons I kind of got into doing upholstery and restoration and sort of fabrics is because I like to come in, get creative, put some music on and get into my own space. You know, I really love what I'm doing, but it always 100% starts with uh, putting the tunes on. Well, Simeon, you might want to crank the music up when you see what Jay has in store for you. With two items tucked away, Jay has just one more to find. A project of his own that he can lavish some love on. You've got a lovely shirt on. I like the shirt. It's nice. You, it's nice when you see someone who's got a bit of style, you know? Thank you. Eh? I like it. We're still searching, Jay, remember? James has arrived, ready to get rid of the rubbish from his boot. So you'd best be quick if you want a peek of what's being ditched. You all right? How are we doing, sir? Oh, hello. I'm Jay. Jay, nice to meet you. I'm James. All right, mate. I'll tell you what I did like. Is that so? Why are you throwing this away? Well, I like to fix and repair my bikes, and uh, this is just an old wheel from about ten years ago off a basic bike, and um, none of the parts fit to my new bike anymore. So right. I'm throwing it away. It's all right with you if I can take this then, and also some of those nuts and bolts in there. Absolutely. What I like about them is. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. And as I don't know what I'm going to do with them, they've set me a challenge, and I love a challenge. And this is definitely going to be a challenge for me. You can make a wind turbine out of that, put a chain drive down to the bottom, and then onto this one. I'll tell you what, do you want my job? <laughs> That's what I'd do. If you, okay. if you, a wind turbine yeah, out of that? You can make some... That, there's you got your first blade here, if you think about it. That could be one of your first wind blades mounted on here. Get I'm a few with more you. of them, and you could... What is that, anyway? That's massive. That's, off a, that's a, the dagger board from a windsurfer. Very old windsurfer, again. All right, well, I'm going to come back for these bolts and all those other bits. Sure. But... Fixings. I'll be back in a minute. Thank you, James. James. No problem. Tough. So, it's a jumble of bike bits and windsurfing cast-offs for Jay's third item. Any more ideas about what could be done with them, James? Maybe some kind of three-wheeled bicycle or uh, maybe, yeah, uh, a new form of transport for inner city cycling. Difficult, but it's going to be a challenge for Jay, definitely. Sounds ambitious. What could anybody make of all of these odds and sods? Now, James did come up with a good idea to put that on there, wind turbine to power, I don't know what. But whatever it is, it's got to be a winner. Jay has his three items. Sarah is challenged with crafting something from the carpet. Simeon will try to revitalise the two chairs and Jay will attempt to work wonders with the bicycle bits and bobs. Three great items in the bag. Now, the owners thought that was the end of the road for their stuff, but it's only just the beginning.
North of the border at her workshop in Perth, Sarah has taken delivery of Jay's salvaged carpet offcuts. There's a lot of them, but the question is, what do you do with them? I have now got my next project from Jay. I would never in 100 years expect to be given some carpet to work with, but it's here. Um, I have been looking at it for some time. I've got a couple of ideas, but I think it would be really good to speak to Jay and see what kind of ideas he's got. And then between us, hopefully we can come up with something that will make this carpet look good again. Well, it's time to find out Jay's thoughts. Hi, Jay. Hello, Sarah. How are you doing? I'm very well, yes. Good. Did you get those carpet offcuts that I sent up to you? <laughs> yes, a pile of carpet, uh-huh. <laughs> so what do you think of them? <laughs> um, it's an unusual thing to get. Well, I had an idea that what you could do with them is do some kind of print or design on them, something like that. I was kind of thinking soft furnishings. I don't know, like a kind of maybe a, some kind of footstool poofy kind of thing. But I quite like your idea of the printing part as well. You know, kind of maybe adding some kind of design onto the surface of it too. Well, it does sound unique. What I want to know, though, is the budget. Well, to make one, probably need about £80. £80? Well, that sounds all right with me. All right, well, I'll leave it with you so you can get cracking on. Thank you. <laughs> I can't wait to get started. All right. Well, take care and speak to you soon. Brilliant. OK, then, Jay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. OK, I've just come off the phone with Jay and... He had quite a few, few good ideas. He was talking about maybe putting some kind of print or some kind of pattern on the surface of the carpet. I think my idea for the footstool or the kind of soft furnishings, kind of poofy kind of thing, is quite good too. So I would like to combine both ideas. So maybe try and apply some kind of pattern to the surface, cut them up into sections and then see what goes on. But I, yeah, I'm, I'm actually in a strange kind of way looking quite forward to the challenge of this project. They've agreed a budget of £80 per footstool. Let's hope Jay will be collecting a magic carpet and isn't having the rug pulled from under him. In the bustling metropolis of Manchester, upholsterer extraordinaire Sibian is nervously awaiting Jay's arrival. Uh, a little bit anxious, a bit excited as well. Um, kind of hoping that uh, it's going to be a chair of some type. So, yeah, let's see what he brings. Now, these are just standard dining chairs, but they need to be spruced up and made into a statement piece. And if anybody can do this, it's definitely Simeon. Here's the man himself. Hey, man. How are we doing, sir? All right, you? <laughs> Very well. Two chairs, what have we got? These right. are good, aren't they? Cool, OK. <laughs> let's get him inside. Simeon loves a chair, and Jay's brought him two. He must be delighted. So two matching chairs. Almost matching. Almost matching. So, I've been waiting to do two bright orange chairs for quite a long time. Well, not two, <laughs> but a bright orange chair. Okay. I've already got the fabric, which is a wool fabric. What, bright orange? Yeah, wool bright orange. It's so bright, you have to wear sunglasses. I'm not even joking. Okay. And then I want to match it yeah. and paint or spray the rest of the frames. Yeah. So it's just all one colour. I do like colour, and normally what I do with colour <laughs> is I have a contrast, just a little bit of something, just to break it all up. Mm. But you're saying, no breaking up. Mm. If I look at the back, it's the same colour yeah. as the front, yeah. the front underneath, yeah. everywhere, it's yeah. all the same colour. Yeah. I've kind of seen it. I've been... I, I'm okay. trying to think where I've seen it. I, I've seen it, I'm sure, in Miami. This, ain't, this isn't Miami. This is Manchester. Yeah, and I'm going to take him to Wolverhampton. I want to bring a bit of Miami too. Wolverhampton. <laughs> <laughs> sort of budget do I have to set aside for this neon, all one colour chair? Or chairs, I should say. Yeah. They're both going to be orange. Bright orange, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what? Probably about the 125 mark per chair. We're not in Miami. I've got to sell them from Wolverhampton. Mm. OK? Yeah. So help us out a bit. Yeah. But <laughs> I'll let you have fun. All right. All right? Thanks a lot. See Take you later, care. Jay. All right. I know what you're thinking. Miami, Manchester, Wolverhampton, bright neon orange. Does it work? We'll just have to wait and see. I'm going to go with this bright orange and I'm just super pleased that Jay's on board with it because I've wanted to do this kind of style, colour for quite a while and I think these are the chairs for it. 
Jay's agreed a budget of £250 for Simeon to transform the two chairs. Jay's a little unsure. Will Simeon be able to win him over with All Over Orange? With Sarah and Simeon off and running in Wolverhampton, Jay's back at his workshop, ready to rummage through his bunch of bike bits. Now I've got a box of odds and sods. No bike wheel without the tyre. And this fender, this used to go underneath a surfboard. And I bet you're wondering, what am I going to make? So what I want to do, I want to make a clock. But first thing I think is clean it. Now, nobody wants that in their house. You've got old dirt and grease. So I'm going to clean this off, get my gloves on, and apron, and yeah, start cleaning. Jay's only going to use the bike wheel to make his wall clock, which means the other bits and bobs can be put to one side for now. So I've just got a mild detergent in there, and it should get all of this grease off. The main thing, I think, is in here, just a bit of mud and dirt and what have you. But I don't want it to look brand new because it's old, isn't it? But just got to give it a go and see what it comes up like. The bicycle is believed to have been around since the 15th century, but it took until the late 19th century before anyone thought to add a chain to connect pedals to the rear wheel. Before that, I guess it was just a wobbly seat. Now that looks like it's going to be a future clock. It does look quite clean and very smart. Look at that. Jay's trying some ordinary cotton ribbon to hang his wall clock, which, if it works on this dry run, will be glued in place. So there we have it. <laughs> so what I've done is I've bought one of these. It's just like a clock mechanism, it has no numbers, we put the battery in, and then that's where you tell the time in. So battery on the back, time on the front. But one of the instructions that is said is don't touch the arms. So I can't touch or paint them or do anything to those. Which is a little bit frustrating, because what I wanted was to pull the arms off of that, put the mechanism on the back, and have the arms coming out this way. How can I do that without touching the arms? Part of the wheel's industrial charm are the gear cogs. They do, however, mean that Jay can't attach his clock mechanism as he'd hoped. So he's going to have to come up with another idea. Solution, because I love problems, but you've always got to come up with a solution, is to leave it as it is and mount it Offset, probably about one o'clock. Bosh, right there. Yeah, that's what I'm going to have to do. Jay spent £20 to convert this wheel into a clock. His original plan has come unstuck, so only time will tell if his new design is really going to work. In Perth. Sarah's about to start work on a carpet footstool plan. Her first task is to see exactly how much carpet Jay's sent. I think what I'll do first of all is maybe start with the kind of beige one, because it's quite soft and it's got quite a nice texture to it. Um, just measure out how much I've got. If I'm making a cube, I need, what, six sides? Six sides? Yes, I think it is. So six shapes to come out of the one. So, uh, bit of carpet. So the first thing to do is make a card or a paper template of the shape that I need to do. Sarah's footstool is to be the same shape as a dice, and in order to make sure all the sides are the same, she's making a template. And uh, this is my bit of card that I'm going to use to make my template. It'll tell me what kind of size I want to make the footstool, but it'll also give me something to cut round. I think I've decided on the number 35. 35 centimetres is the size of each side of the cube, so I need four pieces like this 
and then there'll be a top and a bottom which will be a slightly different shape but I'll have to do those templates once I've done this. Sarah's not exactly sure how her carpet panels are going to fit together to make a footstool. So, maverick that she is, she's working out the design as she goes along. Sarah thinks rounding off the edges will give the chunky carpet cube a softer, more inviting look. As you can imagine four sides, so it's going to be a reasonable size. It, it maybe doesn't look very big being it's in its flat form there, but once it's all built up, it will look spectacular. <laughs> spectacular, that's quite a claim. Using her template, Sarah is cutting four sides from the carpet making sure they're all exactly the same. OK, I've got my templates here. They look too much like carpet and a bit too plain, so I'd like to put just a little bit of decoration on them. So I've got them all lined up into a kind of line because I want my decoration to kind of run through the whole lot. That's the line that's going to have the colour, so you can see it's not really a huge amount of colour that I'm going to be applying, but it'll just kind of, like, break up the whole kind of carpetness of the, of the tile. So it's not going to go all the way to the bottom of the fibres because the carpet's too long, so it might just be a coating on the actual top. But try and get kind of as deep into the fibres as you can without moving the masking tape. But it seems to be going on OK so far. Sarah's using a mineral paint which can be used on fabric. I don't think I'm going to get any more on, really, so I'll leave it like that. Let's hope it works just as well on carpets. OK. But that's the first line done. I'm, I'm very happy with that, how it's turned out. Hopefully I've got a couple of other colours, red and some kind of metallic -y kind of copper. So I'm hoping that they will work just as well. Although the carpet has a stiff backing, the cube footstool is going to need some sort of internal support. And Sarah has a plan. This is my finished inner cube. So all I've got to do now is basically fill it with my stuffing and I've actually got some old polystyrene stuffing from an old bean bag that I had. Sarah needs an extra pair of hands and has roped in able assistant Alfie. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Easy, Alfie. That was probably me because I never had it up. Right, let's go again. Okay. We'll have to just get rid of... It's like Christmas. <laughs> I think it's nearly full. <laughs> you have to get the hoover out. Right. I think that I'll probably have to do. I don't think I can get any more in. And then all I'll do here is I'll hand stitch this closed to keep the little polystyrene bits inside. And then hopefully that'll give quite a good structure for my outer bits of carpet to fit against. All Sarah needs to do now is work out how to attach carpet panels to a beanbag and hope that it creates the classic footstool that Jay's hoping for. In Manchester, Simeon's preparing to give two old dining chairs the bright orange makeover. Just want to have a, a proper look at what's going to go on with these chairs. Because what I want to do is I want to replace this on the back. I want to add some fabric on here instead of having this here. And then what I'm going to do is put some webbing in here as well. But I can't do any of this until I've transformed the frames. So I am going to spray the frames uh, just to give them a massive pop of colour is the best thing I can say about it. The old rattan was originally glued into the grooves around the frame. Just trying to find somewhere where it's coming up so I don't have to damage it too much. I don't want to make sure the frame doesn't get scratched, you see. Although we're going to spray it, I don't want to be filling any of the wood if I don't have to. Any damage to the frame could ruin the sleek finish that Simeon's after. A lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. That's one down, though. At least we've only got one to go. So I'm going to strip one of the seats now as well. Stripping the old seat cover will allow Simeon to assess if there's anything under there worth keeping. OK, so I've just taken off the old piping, and from that I can pretty well much see that the actual seat is in pretty good condition. There's no point throwing things into landfill unless you have to, so I'm not going to recut that. But I want to add, like, a, a more comfortable seat, so I will be recutting some nice new foam, just so that it's nice and comfy for wherever these nice chairs are going to end up. 
So that's definitely for the bin. Simeon used the seat base as a template and is cutting out some comfy new foam padding. OK, so let's get the board here. So that's great. Now I know this fits, I'm going to add the new foam to the seat with some spray adhesive. With this spray adhesive, less is more. You want, like, a stringy effect, and then it'll make sure that both surfaces nicely bond together. Simeon's basing his whole design around an orange fabric he's fallen in love with. Come on, Simeon, just how bright is it? So this is the very bright fabric that I've, um, that I've purchased already. Um, what I want to do is kind of match this colour to the same colour of the frames that I'm going to get them sprayed. Without a doubt, orange is a very in colour. People love orange, they like a nice statement colour, and orange is definitely that way of making a good statement. So I'm really pleased with this fabric, and it's a beautiful fabric as well. It's 100% uh, it's pure wool, so it's a nice, good, long-lasting fabric. After adding a layer of fire-resistant calico, Simeon's stapling on his orange fabric over the seat pad. OK, so that's the seat uh, done with just the piping temporarily put on there, because uh, I'm not quite sure about it. To match in with the back of the chair, I thought I'd give it a go. So I'm going to get the chair and just see how it's kind of looking before I take it off to the spray shop. Simeon's idea is straightforward, but relies entirely on the colour orange to revive these chairs. But Jay's not convinced by a total orange makeover. Are you sure this is going to work? Actually, it looks quite nice. Once you've got, like, the black bottom cloth and it, it's all finished off properly. Might look quite nice. Might tie in nicely with the piping around the back here. Yeah, well, we'll see. When we get this frame back from the sprayers, I'll be able to see it a lot more easier, I think, definitely. With Simeon working on his tangerine dream in Wolverhampton, Jay is putting the finishing touches to his bike wheel wall hanging clock. When Jay first found the bicycle parts, the wheel was one item of many heading for the skip. With a whole lot of elbow grease and a touch of plan B, Jay has turned this wheel from time worn a timepiece. Jay's vision of creating a clock has given this old wheel a practical new purpose. The fabric which frames the wheel and hangs the clock gives a soft and colourful contrast to the industrial metal spokes and cogs, which have been brushed up and given a clear lacquer finish. And while his original plan didn't work out, it's forced Jay into a creative solution that gives it a new, modern twist. Now, sometimes the most simplest builds are the most effective. Now, this tells the time, looks good, and it's just the bike wheel. Yeah, looks good. At the recycling centre, James was about to throw away his bike bits and bobs. Why are you throwing this away? This is just an old wheel from about 10 years ago off a basic bike, and um, none of the parts fit to my new bike anymore, so right. I'm throwing it away. James had some big ideas. A new form of transport for inner-city cycling. Difficult, but it's going to be a challenge for Jay, definitely. As a wise man once said, sometimes the simplest ideas are the best ideas. And this one is simple and practical. But will it clock up a profit? Jay posted his timepiece online, and soon it was heading to an interior shop in Somerset, owned by Dawn. Well, the clock's so different, isn't it? It's so unusual, and for anyone who's interested in sport, it's a perfect gift. James is overseas, but thanks to the magic of the internet, Jay's catching up with him to show him what became of his old bike wheel. How you doing, James? You all right? Hi, Jay. Yeah, really nice to see you again. I'm doing really well, thank you. Enjoying the sunshine. You're over in Germany now, is that right? You're, you're over there working? Yeah, that's right. With my job, uh, I'm currently based on a project and um, having to live and work in Germany. 
recovering my work. Yeah. The last time I saw you, you were throwing away all those bike bits that you didn't have any use for anymore. Yeah, that's right. Um, helping my dad to clear out the uh, the huts in the attic and some parts are pretty pretty useless to us. So I've been quite excited to see what you've managed to do with them. Well. The bicycle parts I took on myself, it was a project I did. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send you over some pictures now so you okay. can take a look. Wow, that's, that's amazing. That looks really good, actually. So what it is I've turned it into is a wheel clock. You've got a lovely blue ribbon around it which holds it onto the wall and then on the side of it you've got this clock that obviously tells you the time. It's the kind of thing you see in uh, some of these sort of, uh, bicycle shops now as ornamental gifts. OK. I could definitely see that hanging on my own wall here in the apartment. Oh, thank you. I've been able to sell it. Someone else has that, and it's gone to a shop. Um, and basically, I have for you £50 profit, and I'm going to make sure I send it over to wow, you. Wow, £50? I'd have, been, I'd have been happy with £5. That's amazing. Well done. Any ideas what you're going to do with the money? Oh, I think I'm going to treat my partner to a nice meal out uh, here, in, here in Germany, so we'll go for a nice meal together. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you, James, for being a good sport. No problem, James. Thank you so much as well, and uh, I'll be the same. I'll be the same. Bye. And James was pleased with that transformation, and he's going to be taking his partner out for a slap-up meal. Now, what could be better? Jay spent £20 creating his bike wheel clock. It sold for £70, giving a profit of £50 for James to treat his partner to a meal out. Lovely. In Perth, Sarah's in her workshop with a tiny little brush. And she's putting the finishing touches to her carpet footstools before Jay arrives. I actually really, really enjoyed this project just because it was like working with something that I don't normally, you know, use in any of my kind of day-to-day -day kind of renovating things. So to be given the opportunity to kind of work with something different, it was good. It really made me kind of like think differently. So I think Jay is going to be really, really happy with my results of what I've done. I sent up some carpet to Sarah and what she said to me was, She's going to make footstools out of it. Very interesting. Let's go and take a look. When Jay claimed the carpet, it was new, but surplus to requirements and heading for the skip. But now... Sarah has conjured up two carpet cube footstools. She's painted on simple but effective colourful geometric line designs which flow all around the sides. Each cube is supported internally by a cotton liner filled with old beanbag stuffing. Sarah has cleverly rounded the corners, giving a softer, more inviting look. And she secured the panels with simple grey trim. The footstalls comply with all UK fire safety standards. way. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I sent up the carpet to you and I wasn't expecting this. These are footstools, right? Yeah, little footstools. Footstools made from the bits of carpet. Footstools in me. the shape of a dice. Could play dice if you wanted to, but... <laughs> now, how did you come up with this well, idea? I didn't want them with little sharp corners, cos then you might kind of hurt yourself, so I had to kind of think of a way to make them this nice kind of curved shape, so that's when the dice kind of shape came in. I tell you what, I... Uh, I'm kind of blown away because I never expected this and what you've done is the most logical thing to do. I've set you a budget of um, £80 per footstool. Y yeah, roughly. Or, uh -huh. Yeah, it was roughly £80. Mm -hmm. So how did we do? Well, because that one's smaller, you got that one for £70 and okay. then this is £80. So, yeah. No, brilliant. They're both mm -hmm. worth it. Thank you. No problem. I'll just get selling them there. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Now, who would have thought? Carpet footstools made in the shape of a dice, and they just look super cool. Only Sarah could have come up with that idea. Genius. Jay's just left, and I think he was pretty amazed at what I'd done with the bits of carpet. I was quite happy with my results and the kind of footstools that I made. Um, so, yes, happiness all round. Um, really, really happy with the results. It's good. Oh, 
That's nice. How we doing? When Jay met Toby and his mum Carolyn, it was their carpet offcuts that caught his eye. These are bits brand new from uh, cut offs from. Okay. So you've laid down new carpet, yeah, yeah, yeah. and this is the offcuts then, yeah. yeah? Jay wasn't put off, but Toby and Carolyn couldn't imagine what could become of their cast offs. Regular bits of carpet, really. I don't, I've no idea what he's going to do with them, to be honest. I think it's going to be a miracle. Jay popped the footstools up for sale. And before long, they were snapped up by a cat cafe in Nottingham, run by Kate. The cats love them, something they can get their claws into without them looking too shabby too quickly. And of course, they're soft, and we know that cats love to sit on something soft. Jay is in Bradford to catch up with Carolyn, to show her what has become of her carpet, and to hand over some cash. Hello. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good. I mustn't complain. Good. Um, last time I saw you was throwing away carpet. Is it, is it all finished now? It's, it's all done now. And it looks good then, yeah? It does look good. All right. Yeah. Have you got any ideas what I would have done with your carpet? Not a clue. <laughs> Not a clue at all. Right. Well, I took your carpet to a lady called Sarah, mm -hmm. and um, I'll show you what she's done. Have a look at this. Tell me what you think. Wow. Yeah. So they're like footstools. Yeah. Um, and I, they're in the shape of a dice, so I want you to throw them because they, they're quite, they look really quite cool. cute. You like it? I do. I quite like them as well. That would fit in our house, too. <laughs> it matches, doesn't <laughs> it? it? Does. <laughs> well, it's the same carpet. <laughs> Sadly, you can't have these ones because they've been sold. Really? And I have for you £50 profit Ooh. for your scrap carpet. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's so, great. So, any ideas what you can do with the money? Oh, sounds like a meal out to me. Oh, was it? Yeah. All right. Well, you take care now. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 It cost £150 to create two carpet cube footstools. They were sold for a total of £200, giving Carolyn a profit of £50 to spend on a meal out. Lovely. With two profits handed back, can Simeon make it three out of three? He's putting the finishing touches to his orange creations. Jay's on his way. I'm super excited to see him because it's a very different project. I'm just hoping that Jay walks through the door and is, I guess, dazzled by them. But we'll wait and see. Now, Simeon said that he's going to do me two cheers that are going to be all over orange. Now, I'm not too sure about this one. Let's go and take a look. When Jay rescued them from the skip, the chair's prospects look very gloomy. But now... Their future's looking bright. Bright, vivid orange. Simeon has removed the rattan backs and given the chairs plump, comfortable, wool-covered seats and backs. The frames have been re-glued and sprayed orange to match the fabric. And, of course, they all comply with UK safety standards. Last time Jay saw them, he was struggling to imagine them working with just one colour. The question is, will he be won over when he sees them? <laughs> no, that is orange. <laughs> you said orange. <laughs> You've definitely given me orange. Wow. I'm going to miss these because they're, like, such a <laughs> prominent part of my workshop over the last few weeks, you know? I do like these, man. And yeah. it's lovely. This is wool, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think they work, they're fun, and the, the fact is they've been repurposed and remade and now they look great. Yeah. No, yeah. they do, because it, it's, it's, it wasn't a special chair, or no. they wasn't mm. a special chair, and what you've done is you've just turned mm. them into... The, yeah, an orange chair. Mm. OK. OK. Budget, how did we do? Yeah, just absolutely spot on this time. So, one, two, five yeah. each, 250 total for two special, bespoke, orange cheers. <laughs> Great job, mate. Thanks, man. You need to stop doing this. Uh, hey? <laughs> right. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Take care. Now, who would have thought 
having two chairs looking exactly the same, in exactly the same colour, all over, would have looked as cool as that. Simeon, well done, mate. Jay's reaction to the chairs, I think, was good. Um, he kind of got where I was going with them. He wasn't quite sure about a whole orange chair, but he kind of loved them when he, when he saw them. When Jay met him, Irfan's chairs were on the way out. Why are you throwing them away? They look like nothing's wrong with them. No, because I need the space. They were in a garage. I need to empty the garage. OK. Yeah. Irfan couldn't understand Jay's interest. I don't know why Jay wants my chairs for, because they're just the chairs. I don't know what he's going to do with them. What he did with them is hand them over to Simeon, who had a bright idea. They were advertised online, and they certainly caught the eye of a gallery in Kendall. Amber is delighted with her purchase. I loved the traditional chair with the uh, bright upholstery and the, the paint finish, making it a really unusual and contemporary item. Jay's returned to Bradford to show Irfan what's become of his old chairs and hand over some cash. Irfan. Hello. How are we doing? Not too bad. Though. Oh, brilliant. Um, did you have any idea what I might be doing with your chairs? No. No idea, no clue what you And why would you find them away? Because the chairs, for me, they looked all right. You can see the garage here. It was yeah. full of it. I need, to, <laughs> I need some space. You need space, yeah? I need space, yeah. Well, I took your chairs up to a guy called Simeon in Manchester, and what he did with your chairs... Let me show you what he did with them. It's lovely. <laughs> they look nice. You like that, yeah? Yeah. So, do you like orange? Yeah. It's, it's a lot of orange. But um, it's nice. It's it looks nice. nice, yeah. Yeah? Futures looks nice. See, well, that... I'm glad to hear that. Well, somebody else thought they looked beautiful, so much so that they bought them, and I've got £70 profit for you, oh, sir. Thank you very <laughs> yeah. much. But you've got to take that, that's yours. Yeah, thank you very much. So what are you going to do with the money? I'm going to spend it on my missus. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, that's nice, man. What are you going to do? You're going to take it right for a meal? Of course. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. Fan, it's always a pleasure. You take thank care you. now, yeah? Thank you. See you later. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, that was lucky. Irfan loves orange, and he's taking his missus out for a meal. What could be better? The tangerine transformation of the two chairs cost £250. They were sold for £320, giving Irfan a £70 profit to spend on his wife. Jay salvaged three items from the recycling centre. The carpet offcuts live on as footstools. The dull dining chairs have a very bright future. And time didn't stand still for the old bicycle wheel. Old and unwanted items have been turned into stylish must-haves. It just goes to show that you can find gems amongst the trash.